there guys, this is Obsidian Chill. Got another video for you today. Welcome to the start of the in-depth updated guide series. What I'm going to be doing is going through all of my previous guides and updating the relevant information, tips, tricks, artifacts, uh, rotations, single target, melee, uh, range rotations if there's range. Um, because a lot of the guides, uh, especially the controller ones, were done almost a year ago. So there's definitely updates to most of them. Uh, so what I'm going to be doing is touching on all that information here. The big change around this time is that I will be doing uh, precision rotations as well for single target and melee. Uh, the range single target or range precision is just dueled for your shot, so that doesn't really affect anything. But um, I will be doing covering basically all of everything to do with the power set. So precision might all in one video. Um, since this is basically just focusing on the updated material, uh, I will link to the previous guides just so that uh, if you need to have some background information or more in depth, uh, all the current guides will be linked in the comment section and at the end of the video for so this is gadget. So you'll have the it gadgets in depth guide updated uh, linked at the end. Uh, and then as well, this is just going to be covering on the rotations themselves. Uh, I'm trying to keep this a bit shorter, straight to the point. So it's, I'm not going to make it like you know like an hour and a half long each time with tons of raid footage and testing and all that because it's already been done. Or there's other videos on my channel that uh, that show that as well. So this is going to be straight to the point. Here are the rotations. Here are the specs. Anything that's changed. Here you go. So let's start this now. Okay, to touch on the gadgets uh, might side of it, uh, hasn't really changed much. Uh, once again, from the in-depth guide, you're still kind of specking the exact same superpowered spec, critical attack chance, critical attack damage, maxing a might, putting the rest in health. Uh, in terms of iconic power, Sonic Cry, and you, you're not necessarily using Neo Venom Boost. I take it just in case I run it. Um, same thing, you don't need to take Whirling Dervish uh, Speed Drain just in case you need it. The, the superchargers are what's um, more of a choice with gadgets. Uh, so on stealth, EMP on stealth, just because the the dovetail, it just you'll see you'll see in the clip or you'll see experience even if you try it yourself. It just EMP doesn't always work on your main loadout because of the dovetail. If you use it within like a couple seconds of stealth, the dovetail from EMP is going to kick you out of stealth and it's just it's a, being an annoying issue since death revamp. So uh, EMP just works a little bit better or, or it's um, a bit more practical on stealth itself and then have uh, like PDR clips into it. Either that or you'd have to use uh, EMP at the very start. So I have to do like Cyclone Push, Jump Cancel with Turret, EMP, and then do the rest of the rotation. Uh, it makes it uh, a little bit awkward there. Plus it's uh, lower parsing. So and in terms of the supercharges, you're just kind of picking your pick. If you're going to a raid with a full supercharge, use Bunker Buster. If you're, I'm using Eye of the Gemini, so if I have a speed drain every 30 seconds, I can use that or Neo Venom, just depending on how much supercharge I'm earning. But since I'm running the book as an artifact, um, I'm not earning as much supercharge because the, the books can be slightly higher damage uh, compared to um, running the Soul Cloak because I'm not really getting much benefit out of the Soul Cloak uh, because I'm, just, I'm not earning that much supercharge with gadgets compared to, like say, like an Earth or something easy unstoppable. So I'd rather have the extra pet damage, act as an extra dot, uh, and then have that instead of the, uh, the Soul Cloak just to kind of supplement that damage. But in terms of Loda, the only... I wouldn't say drawback to gadgets, but uh, I'll tell you up front, just how nature is with acrobats, uh, acrobatics, uh, super speed just works very well with gadgets. You've got um, Cyclone Push, Tornado Pull, Whirling Dervish, uh, where's the movement boats, super speed, uh, like even Vortex Trap is good for prec, um, prec melee, Tornado Pull, Cyclone Push. Uh, obviously dash attack is a really good shield in case you're doing it using your controlling or whatever or solo content speed drains a, good, a decent supercharge that always can proc the gemini you've got dervish it, it just super speed move it lends itself very well to being gadgets uh so that's why a lot of these abilities you see me using move more powers like i'm i'm always using cyclone push in the melee always using tornado pull in the single target so you don't have to be you can get away with acrobats but you're going to lose some damage but um flight and skimming same thing it's just it's gadgets is one of those power sets where if you want to maximize it you're gonna have to be super speed if not then you're kind of subbing in powers and that you know, don't feel obligated to go super speed but uh, if you want to maximize your percent potential gadgets is going to be a super speed movement for that for the dps at least okay so on the single target side uh obviously everything's still the same spec wise um, iconic powers you have to take heat vision super speed now you're taking tornado pull instead of uh cyclone push loadouts uh i'll touch on it when i do the rotation as well but uh the most important thing is to when you're jump canceling uh turret is to always do fear gas while you're in the air so you can kind of 
it's not really a full cancel. It's not as powerful as it once was in the past, but uh, you still save animation time by doing fear gas in the air as opposed to uh, just doing it normally. It, it's like a f fraction of a second, but it still uh, speeds up the animation. It makes it more fluid because uh, you know you're clipping turret in the air, falling, doing fear gas, and going straight into heat vision. So it's just a more fluid rotation using it that wise. So you've got the fear gas dots, so you've got the heat vision dots, and then the burst from taser pull and tornado pull. And then on stealth, you have the regular uh, cuff them and surprise attack clip with your supercharges. So let's get into the rotations. Okay, so that was a brief glance at the gadgets. Uh, Might melee, uh, surprise, surprise, they ran out of power. Uh, even with an energy cola, was still running out of power. So we had 48, 51, 41, but that was a 16.4% uh, chance, crit chance. So that's on the low end spectrum for sure of the crit chances. Then obviously the last one was 39, but I ran out of power there, but that was shaping up to be a nicer one at 20%. Uh, so gadgets might uh, melee and precision melee are very close together in, in terms of damage, uh, which, you'll, which you'll see in the video as well. There's a slightly higher potential with the precision just because of the outside buffs. So you got uh, if you're running sparring AI, obviously you've got the chance to get the uh, counter and then have the increased weapon DPS and precision. You've got the troll buff. Uh, so you get slightly higher damage potential with the gadgets precision. Uh, I, I know people can get parsers up to 60Ks in that one in, in content, uh, where you're not going to really be touching that with them on might side. But at the same time, obviously, there's there's much more things that can go wrong. You, you've got uh, smoke bomb being interrupted, massive damage loss. You're getting blocked on smoke bomb, massive damage loss again, where you don't really have that on the might side because you're not as interruptible. Um, it's just implosion mine technically that's vulnerable interrupt, but uh, there's not going to be any kind of issues at all. Uh, so you're much safer running the might build and not too much of a damage loss. It's just that precision in, in like a best case scenario situation obviously has much greater potential with gadgets. And then, uh, as I was speaking with before, it just works out. It's unfortunate that we still have to deal with the, the dovetail issues with stealth, so we can't have, obviously we can't use craft field at all, but we're stuck using EMP uh, pulse on stealth just because the cooldowns don't really work, as well as if you used it, EMP pulse uh, either to clip stealth or even before stealth, the dovetails are going to knock you out of stealth and not be able to use it. So it's kind of stuck on stealth along with the superchargers. And then we've got Cyclone Potion, which is, uh, like I said before, super speed just works so well with gadgets. Having the, the right powers like Cyclone Potion, Tornado Pull, uh, they clip together very nicely and very quickly, 1.75, 1.5. And then, uh, as I was saying before, uh, since you're always in the air clipping, uh, clipping Suppressor Turret, you can always summon uh, Implosion Mine on the way down. So before, like if I jump cancel turret or jump cancel implosion mine, it doesn't summon you get no damage. So it's not that you're going to jump cancel anyway, but if you're you know jumping around, you might do it by accident. But uh, since you're always in the air clipping suppressor turret, it's pretty much impossible to screw up the implosion mine uh, summon. You don't have to worry about accidentally jump canceling it. But that, that that's uh, the might there so far. We'll on to the single target. Thank you. 
Okay, so that's Gadget's Might Single Target. As you can see, the, the other issue of parsing single target is the sparring target dies. So even if you have power to do rotations, it just ends up dying. Uh, so we had uh, 29, 31, 26, 26, 28, and then uh, ran out of power. Crit chance is all in like the low 20s, besides those two there. So that's more a bit more realistic. So it is. It has the chance to do well. Like if if this rotation crits well, like if you get a nice crit on like on cuff them or surprise attack or even the taser pulls or or tornado pull. Like if you get like say crit parser in like that mid 20s, uh, you're beating prec. Uh, like this is very competitive against prec. The only thing is prec is more consistently better. Uh, especially with that troll buff where this one has to have the crit so it's, I wouldn't say it's crit dependent because as you can see I'm not really getting that many crits but if you want to beat prec uh, as gadgets might single target you're gonna need the crits on your side uh, so the nice thing about this is that um, how it's set up is it's the same concept where implosion mine on the on the might one on the melee but uh, since I'm doing a jump cancel with uh, suppressor turret uh, since I'm falling uh, I can do fear gas in the air, and then it, it's not really a fall cancel. It's not as powerful as it was in the past, but it still saves you animation time from uh, doing it in the air and then, and then falling. It just It's not as quick as it is before, but it does save a slight animation time uh, as opposed to trying to do it normally and then trying to jump clip it. So it, it's a slight uh, animation time faster, but uh, you've got the dot from fear gas. You've got all the bursts from taser pull, tornado pull, and the heat vision dots as well. So that's uh, kind of how it works out with single target. So it has potential, uh, it's just you need some crits. Okay, for the precision side of gadgets, uh, once again, uh, like I said in the might uh, side, super speed just lends itself very well to gadgets and, and precision in general. Uh, you've got uh, phase dodge, uh, in the melee you've got the whirling dervish and vortex trap uh, weapon tap cancel if you want to do that. You've got tornado pull in the single target, so it, it's just very uh, well oriented for single target or for precision in general, gadgets especially. Uh, in terms of the melee, actually we'll go into spec first. Uh, spec, obviously weapons expert, critical attack chance, attack damage, everything to precision. Uh, if you have the cog, you'd put everything to health. If you don't have the cog, you put everything in might and power. In terms of the artifacts, you're always gonna have the venomous dispenser. Uh, you may or may not always have the the Grenorum artifact, uh, it's very handy, it's 4% might, 4% prex, so you get both a, a buff on both. Uh, the day setup isn't necessarily important whatsoever to gadgets, uh, it's just extra pet damage, that's all it does. Uh, so it's like having a secondary robot psychic. Uh, and then for the third artifact, ideally you would have the sparring AI, so you get the weapon damage and uh, from the weapon DPS precision buff if you uh, successfully counter an enemy. If you don't have the sparring AI, then you run the cog. Uh, so that's the ideal third position artifact. I just don't have uh, the cog or um, sparring AI because I'm not uh, primarily a precision DPS. In terms of uh, mods, you're gonna have the critical battle display three in the head, back mod, accelerated suppressor turret, neck mod, you're gonna have relentless uh, precision, obviously you're gonna have blast adapter and a weapon. Uh, in terms of, I go back here. In terms of obviously for the melee spec, you're gonna max out bow mastery. And for martial arts, uh, down to martial arts mastery, so you can take the smoke bomb mastery for the melee. Uh, iconic power, sonic cry, and neo venom boost. And in terms of the loadout itself, uh, now your mileage may vary in this. I personally found a little bit higher damage with uh, napalm grenade instead of foam. I know a lot of people use foam. Foam, you don't benefit the PI. There's nothing that precision uses to set up electrify or burning uh, to take advantage of that PI from foam. Uh, I just, for whatever reason, just found a little bit more success with napalm grenade. Uh, you can try both, but that's pretty much the only change would be summing out either napalm or foam in this rotation. Uh, so you're clipping Sonic Cry with Battle Spy to start off with, then doing Smoke Bomb into P Dart, Stealth, uh, and doing EMP. If it's a single target enemy, you could do the Cuff from Clip to get some single target damage and then EMP. Then you just have your supercharges on Stealth. And then you're clipping, uh, doing smoke bomb again, going into napalm grenade, jump uh, cancel with suppressor turret, regular smoke bomb, then napalm grenade, jump cancel again, into sonic cry battle display, and you'll see when I do the rotation, how the cooldowns pretty much line up all together. So we can touch on the single target side. And single target side, nothing changes spec wise, exactly the same, and the only difference would be uh, if you have the cog or sparring eye. Uh, now you just have to make sure you take tornado pull. You can take phase dodge too. It just uh, 
I don't use it in this particular setup. Uh, so with this one, you are doing uh, Tornado Pull, Battle Splay, and Spresso Turret clipped at once. Uh, with Robot Psychic out, make sure you have Robot Psychic on Stealth as well, or it will desummon. And then basically you're just doing Taser Pull, Stealth, uh, clip with spread or sorry taser taser pull clip with stealth and then stealth and spread attack and then you have your supercharges on stealth there as well and then basically you're once you're out of that doing flurry shot again their tornado pull clip with suppressor turret tornado pull and then uh not sorry suppressor turret clip and then after you do flurry shot again all three will be up and you basically restart the rotation so you got the robot psychic pet damage you've got the granorum pet damage uh and then you've got the burst from uh, tornado and taser pull and that's pretty much it for single target so we'll get to the rotations here. In, in terms of artifact or trinkets, etc., same thing. Shadow Bat, uh, which is basically the seahorse. You run the uh, the Shadow Snake for AoE melee, Green Crystal Turret, stuff like that. But uh, it, it, it's pretty straightforward from a spec-wise, what you expect for it, and you'll be able to see the Okay, so you get the uh, just the rotation there. Uh, where did it start? 47, 50. Th you can ignore the 38 because I screwed up the soda clip. Plus, it was a 19% crit chance, so toss that one. 52, 44, 52. And this is all without the troll buff. The, the troll buff you're going to have constantly within the instance, with any instance that you run with the troller. And that's another 20% weapon DPS and precision on top of that. Uh, so that turns these like low 50s into like mid 50s, uh, approaching 60s with the crits. Because even these are uh, like 52, that was 19 percent crit chats even uh 52 that was a 19 50 that was a 22 so none of these crits are even in the 30s um actually that 44 was in the 30s but uh, you, you can see the uh surprise stack didn't crit there or not surprise stack uh, the emps didn't uh, where everyone else did but yeah, you can see the gist of the rotation there's going to be lots of variations some people use foam i tried to use cryo foam for some of my rotations i just found that it was slightly lower um as opposed to in content, it might be in content because uh, more people be running form a foam as a precision DPS than, than I would have had experience with. But I just found that uh, I was getting slightly higher results with napalm grenade uh, over foam. But uh, you guys, results may differ for you guys. But as you can see, these are the numbers that I'm getting, uh, which is just normal uh, stats, no kind of raid buff or uh, actually the troll buff as well, which is hugely important precision DPS.
Okay, so you get the just the rotation there. Uh, 29K, that was on the 17% crit chance, which is nothing. Uh, 30 on 20 and 31 on 22. And then I'm obviously starting to run out of power, even 25 and 9. So even if any of those had any kind of decent crit chance, uh, like 24, 25, 26%, those are all mid 30s in, in the parsers. And that's without the troll well. So the issue is that it's a very power intensive rotation because I'm always I'm clipping uh, Tornado Pull uh, the extra time. So it, it does get power intensive. If I had a controller, then obviously I get the troll buff, which is kind of skew the numbers a bit more so if you want me to in the future in future videos have the troller for these uh, precision testing so i can do the rotation more often uh, if it's power intensive but then account for the troll buff but it, it's up in the air it depends what you guys want uh, in terms of my testing because obviously the troll buff is going to give that 20 percent, which is going to change all those numbers drastically but that's what we're going to have consistently in the raids from a uh, dps perspective view from precision but uh you get an idea of the single target rotation there obviously it's a bit annoying in the sparring tire because tornado and taser pull are pulling it but uh, you get the idea there. It's, uh, it's a very uh, power intensive rotation where you're not just relying on flurry shot. You're always doing the extra clips as well. Okay, so the controller section of my previous in-depth guide video for gadgets is still up to date in terms of uh, spec and rotation and everything like that. We can kind of briefly touch over it again here. So in terms of uh, skill points, you're still going to be taking hybrid spec. I've already touched on the video, super power versus hybrid. Uh, obviously your critical power nates. Uh, you're still going to be maxing out might and power. That's how I always spec controller and then putting the rest into VIT. In terms of everything else like iconics or super speed, your movement mode abilities, nothing that really matters. Weapons, you're just taking down a solar flame. Uh, that doesn't change as well. Artifacts, uh, the same setup for controlling that I always have. Parasite, power hand, scrap of soul cloak, and amulet of Rao. In terms of artifacts, that's your personal preference, really. Uh, vit trinket, breakout trinket, the summer event trinket gives a little bit of it back. Uh, orbital supply, like that's that comes down to your preference. Uh, chest mod is going to be power efficiency. Head mod is going to be uh, supercharged battle drone. Uh, obviously, neck mod would be re replenishing procs. Uh, you could have improved stealth, uh, max damage. Uh, weapon mods obviously going to be replenishing. So in terms of uh, loadout and rotation, it's still going to be stasis field. Ooh which is your supercharge generator and your defense debuff, uh, defibrillator, napalm grenades, or heal. Uh, P-Dart is your attack debuff. You could run Sticky Bomb. The only thing is the, the CC effect on Sticky Bomb is really obnoxious uh, compared to P-Dart, which is just a regular hard stun. So I much prefer that, even though it's an extra 100 power cost. Uh, Distract and Battle Drone. And in terms of rotation, same thing. Clipping supercharge generator, first debuff, second debuff, wait and back into it you can also clip the defense the uh, other napalm grenade again like this if you have the power it just helps with supercharge regeneration but uh that's essentially how it is oh missed it there it lags behind that's that's where the mental one has a the super speed one but that's all it is for gadgets for controlling everything stays the same as the as the previous guide if you have any questions uh, you can refer to that